This is 12 great debut albums from 1969. And a lot of these albums you've probably never seen before. I'm going to start off with one that I know nobody knows this album. In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. This is before Prague was called Prague. This is when you just listened to music. You didn't have to call it something. But, oh, brother, Led Zeppelin's first album. This was literally everywhere. You could walk down the street and hear this. It's like when Sgt. Pepper came out. You heard it everywhere. Same with this. This was like a blast. The blues all turned inside out. And we have some Johnny Winter blues with the, what's this one? The Progressive Blues Experiment. It's a mouthful. Great album. Lots of great blues. This is when, when Johnny Winter was a blues guy. Not a blues rock guy. He was a blues guy. And I've always loved Poco right from day one. This is picking up the pieces. And uh, that's when I, well, I'd already grown to love country music because I always did but didn't know it. And uh, Poco was before the Eagles and I still like Poco better. <laughs> So then we're going to Janis Joplin's first solo album. Nah, should have stuck with Big Brother. I mean, this is okay, try a little, that's good. But, ah, I don't know, I always liked it better with Big Brother. This is a one-off album, Blind Faith. And we got Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker from that other band, Cream. And we got Stevie Winwood and some other bass player, Rick Gretsch, I guess his name is. But this is the cover we got in Canada, and I like this cover better, actually. And uh, do what you like, nah, but the rest of it is top-notch music. Then we have Chicago Transit Authority, the first album by Chicago, and they had a longer name then, and then they reduced it to Chicago. This is Four Sides, all great, for a, especially for a debut album. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, all these guys had been seen many times before, but they came together and formed Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and this is their debut album, and uh, it has Marrakesh, Marrakesh Express on it. Not one of my favorites, but the rest I can live with. Santana's first album, another blast of fresh air, especially when you saw them at uh, Woodstock. A year later, oh no, it's actually 69 when you saw them, but you didn't see the movie till 1970. But this is a great album from start to finish. Neil Young's first album, I still like this album. There's a Emperor, Emperor of Wyoming, I like that. It's a little instrumental thing, it starts it off. It's kind of a laid back album, and there's another instrumental, The Old Laughing Lady. There's a couple songs that are kind of iffy, but overall, I'll take it. Now I got two albums here that are twofers, so I'm going to have to show a uh, thumbnail from the internet because these albums are twofers and they don't show the original cover. This is the Flying Burrito Brothers' first album and second. And there it is there. I was right in from the start with Flying Burrito Brothers. Also, love Graham Parsons from uh, The Birds and onwards. Listen to him. Oh, I can't even say how many times I listened to him. And then, the Almond Brothers' first album, and this one's a two for two, the first two Almond Brother albums, but they don't show the original graphics or the original pictures. <laughs> it would have been so hard to do. But I remember first hearing the Almond Brothers' first album, those two songs, Don't Want You No More, and It's Not My Cross to Bear. There is not a be better intro to an album for the first two songs that I can think of. So I'll have to show a thumbnail of that one too. The Almond Brothers' first album. So that's a, well, that's a few. That's that's a top notch debut albums from 1969. And I was there. I was 18. 18. I didn't know what the hell I wanted. 18. Whatever. I can't remember.